Hi everyone, my name is Matt and uh, this video is in response to Todd Cutler's video about the Instant Legolas and specifically the power assist mechanism uh, for the Instant Legolas and um, his latest video where he attempted to make the power assist and it didn't work out quite as planned and then he called on his audience members to uh, you know try their own hand at, at making an improvement. Uh, so let me show you what I came up with. Um, so I made my model out of Legos just because they're um, you know, I had them on hand and they're pretty easy to work with, uh, so I came up with this quick. So, as you can probably tell, um, this part here is the bow, just a rubber band to represent the bow string. Uh, this part here is the slider mechanism, uh, the magazine, and then this front portion here would be the power assist mechanism. Um, and the main part of the power assist mechanism is these spring-operated levers here. Uh, there's two of them, and if you look at it from the front, you get a good angle there. You can see that they, they overlap one another. They're not in the same plane. That way they can do this. Um, so, as I said, uh, right now I'm just using rubber bands here to kind of put that torque on them. Um, I realize that's not a medieval way to do it. Um, the first thing I would think of is some sort of torque spring. I'm not sure if they had torque springs in medieval times. Um, either that or maybe a... a a uh, twisted skein of rope like you, they may have used on a ballista or maybe something like that cam and leaf spring mechanism that Todd used in his original prototype. Uh, I'll probably defer to him to figure out the best way to uh, create that torque, but either way this is a proof of concept. Um, anyway, so the idea is that um, what Todd wanted was a, a power assist that pushed at its highest force at the end of the, the draw of the bow. So when the, the uh, the magazine would be in its most retracted position so that as you're pushing it forward you know you you hit the most resistance at the beginning and then it kind of lets off a little bit there's less force and then as you drop back it starts off with less force as you draw the bow back uh, and then it gives you the biggest push right at the end you give you the most assist when you need it the most when the bow is drawn back all the way uh, and this is what this does because um, the way these levers work is that as they pivot out more towards the horizontal the component of force going in this direction is going to get less and less uh, it's going to be converted more to like a pinching force like a vertical force here but then as they retract back as you draw the bow back and they get closer and closer to the vertical uh, that lateral component of force will get higher and higher until you finally get the biggest push when they're in that vertical position so they want to bend this way and that force is going to all go this way um, and I had originally contemplated just having one of these levers, but I thought just to have balance and to keep you from having a, a racking force, you know, one way or the other, it would be nice to have balance. And also because you're doubling up on them, uh, you only need half the amount of torque on each one because then double, you know, you're doubling them so you get twice as much force. Um, so it works pretty good, I think. I mean, it's kind of a rough model here. Um, it's a little tight, but you can see how you get kind of a, a nice little resistance at the beginning, but then as you push it, it kind of gets to a point where it's not really pu enough to push that, that slider back. And then you get to the end here, and then you can notch the string, and then you pull it back, and then you eventually get, it locks it in place like that. Um, and if I just kind of manually move these levers out of the way, you can see how if I remove their assistance, the bow wants to slide it forward on its own like that. But if I kind of put them in place, it holds it. So it does work. Um, so I think it's a fairly elegant solution to the problem. Uh, it's really just a couple of moving parts. There's two levers that are in front of the nose of the slider arm. The slider arm just pushes them out of the way. You don't have to worry about them uh, being in sync because they're just automatically going to do that the way it works. Um, there's no ropes or pulleys or anything like that. Um, and just a couple of other thoughts. Um, you can change the length of these arms here. Um, so the way I have it set up right now is that they kind of follow the, the slider, the entire length of the slider, all the way until the end. Um, you could actually shorten the levers a little bit so that, and I can simulate that just by kind of pushing the slider forward a little bit more to simulate a shorter arm. But you can see how they start just riding on, on top and below that arm. And at this point, they're not pushing this way at all. They can't get any purchase on this to slide it. So you would actually get zero resistance as you're pushing forward. So you could design the length of these arms so that, um, you know, the, the 
pushing force drops to zero maybe halfway through the stroke. Now what that also means is that as you're drawing the bow back, you would also get zero assistance for the first half of the stroke, but again, you don't really need uh, assistance on the first half, you really need it on the latter half when the, the, the draw for, force of the bow starts getting really tight. And it would still do that. It would kick in right near the end, right when the, the arms kind of overlap on the front like that. So that's an alternate way you could do it. Um, another idea would be instead of using straight arms here, you could actually curve them. So um, you could put kind of a, a curve in this direction here. And what that would do is that when they're retracted like this, you could start them out, they'd still be vertical, and then maybe the curve could kind of start just past where they contact uh, the tip of the slider. And what that does is that as you're pushing the slider forward, they'd immediately start hitting that curved part, which would then go to horizontal a lot faster. So you could actually drop that, that forward force down to pretty much zero much faster. Um, and then as you retract it, it'll ramp up much quicker right near the end and kind of give you a nice let off at the end. Um, anyway, so yeah, that's my idea. Um, I did a little bit of math, uh, kind of plotted out the force versus distance curve that I got just in an example where uh, the overall length of this right here is two feet, so about a foot from the center out. Uh, and then the overall sliding travel is 28 inches, which I estimated was probably about what the, the longbow would be. Um, and you can kind of see how, you know, oh, and I was also accounting for a 100 pound long bow and then maybe 50 pounds of let off. Uh, so you'd have 50 pounds of initial resistance pushing forward, which would then very rapidly drop down based on my plot um, to probably closer to 10 pounds. So it gets pretty easy to push forward after you overcome that, that first hurdle at the beginning. Uh, and of course, you could reduce that if it was a bit too much. Um, and I'll also probably put in a photo just of some of the math I did. It's just some trigonometry and things like that to uh, just kind of show how we did the math for anyone out there who wants to look at it. It's been a while since I've done math like that. Uh, so I may have made a mistake, but it, the numbers look right. So anyway, that's my idea. I think it works. I think it's a, a pretty decent idea. And uh, I hope Todd sees it. I hope Todd likes it. And uh, hope everyone else does too. Thanks.